I wanted us to have a conversation today about how art challenges power. Uh, we see that artists are often in the front line uh, when in a conflict. They're often persecuted just because of their art. And talking to the three of you that are all artists, I, I wanted to start out with why is that? Like, why is art so powerful that it makes people in power afraid? Uh, simply, art is the fastest way to uh, talk to public and to even change the culture or um, you can even brainwash people with art. So it's very dangerous. People would not listen to uh, politicians, but they will t listen to artists. And they will like memorize their songs or get affected with uh, films and movies, or theater, not with uh, politicians' speeches. So they must be very afraid of artists, of course. They know they are pow more powerful than them. When you were in Egypt and, and working as a, you, c you call yourself a sound composer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, how did you experience that? I was uh, oppressed in a, in a different way than just being arrested um, uh, for, for speaking out, for writing. I'm not a singer, so uh, I, I just can make like a production for another singer who is singing it against the regime. Uh, but uh, as an activist, I, I post uh, on social media and uh, that will put you in jail uh, like in a minute. Uh, but also because I'm a woman, I was uh, sexually attacked. And that's a very strong weapon uh, to make people afraid. And not just women, it's all her family. Uh, and that's what, uh, what the protest was. It was the people, the Egyptian people, protesting against the regime. So when you attack women, you are uh, already attacking all her family. So it's all about uh, uh, scaring and uh, make you uh, uh, comply with um, the system or uh, the, um, the rules that they want you to follow, or you will pay a very high price for that. So um, it's a very mean way to uh, control and to uh, prevail the dictatorship and control people's minds also through religion. Like it's, all, it's, all, it's all about brainwashing. Mm. Do you feel like your art is kind of yeah, I in do itself. it. I do it uh, through my art, and now I started adding um, other singers on my compositions. Um, and uh, uh, I'm still, I'm still a bit afraid for my family in Egypt, uh, when even when I do that here. But I can take it further. I can um, uh, uh, sometimes, if it's really, really, um, uh, I shouldn't say that. But if it's really, really offensive, I don't write my name on it. Um, I did that several times, even while I'm here. And uh, this persona, they want to kill, I guess, but they don't know it's me. <laughs> this is very dangerous to say now. But they, won't never, they will never know that it is me. You know? mm -hmm. So I still have these double uh, uh, personalities, double, pe double artists. I have also that instrumental one. This is safe. So uh, it's even dangerous when you are abroad, still. Uh, in Norway, uh, art can also be controversial, uh, and you both work in Norway. And how how have you experienced how art can be can be powerful, or or either as activism or in itself? I'm I'm I'm, I'm sort of thinking that uh, for in the in the original, uh, I mean, as art as a power, you know, and and as powerful. Then um, I, w I would think that that art it could be po powerful when it meets people. You know, when you are a part of a movement, or or when you when you're um, are leading or or working with uh, a, a group of people or or um, important movements in the people, and 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 not by itself really. Uh, so I think that. I mean, when uh, I was in a rap group called Galtos Parlament, a really good rap group, um, and and yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and and of course we I never been to Hayer Square and or anything like it, uh, so I agree. It it feels kind of silly to discuss it in this context, but but hey, hey, here here we are, so let's accept that. No, but but um, we when. 
I mean, we, we have always seen our music as, uh, as a, um, a weapon or a, a tool to, to change the world in, in some direction that we want to, to change the world. And we have been also been activists at the same time, so, so we haven't like been, uh, we haven't needed to go out, what shall we make a song about? Because it's always there, because you're always in some kind of a struggle and some kind of a fight, and you need to, 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 uh, Express that and to make a song that can I can help it in some kind of way, and and um, the moment when you s feel that now it's working <laughs> in, in some way is of course the moment when you are connecting with people and and uh, and are able to enrage people <laughs> or or to make people fight and and when you say something I mean we did one really an important uh, thing once where we criticized the, the, the crown prince of Norway. And you know, and it, it was not an important political fight for us, you know, to, to fight the monarchy. It was more like, yeah, yeah, you know, hey, it's monarchy, it's silly, so let's like oppose it. Um, and it wouldn't be important if it hadn't been that there were like 1,500 people in the crowd that were shouting with us, you know, yeah. and the crown prince was in the back of the, of the room, and and it, you know, and, and it's the moment when you when you meet those, those all those people, and also all, all our important songs <laughs> really has been is not about the songs; it's about the 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 movement we make ourselves part of. I, the great philosopher Cersei Lannister once said, <laughs> power is power, you know, and art isn't power unless you can turn it into power in some way, and thousands of marching people, that's power, you know, that's obviously power. So if you can work with that, then you, then you can have power. What about the prime minister? Is it just the prince? Mm. Mm. Well, well, you no, just you criticize the monarchy. Can you do that with the prime minister? Do it anybody. Oh yeah, yeah. It's much easier to do it against the prime easier. minister because everybody has the prime minister. The prince, everybody loves, you know. So that, uh. then it's but of more controversial. Okay. But I mean, that wasn't important <laughs> for us, you know. But it, it was, was very. Just, uh, it it was, was just a fun idea when you were just saying crown prince, and then lately we just hear crown prince in the media. When we hear crown prince, we hear about the. Of course, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. That's the sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to think about. I suddenly just saw this image, oh. Gato's Parliament, with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia sitting on the back, oh, yeah, that going in. But we <laughs> probably wouldn't <laughs> dare to do that. You'd no, be cut in pieces. Now. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just. I think there is a difference when you talk. Also, I mean, of course we can. There's differences, but I don't think we should. We should get scared of discussion, discussing the differences because there's also. Problematic when we uh, when we put problematics. I, I, of course, there is a difference to be activist in Egypt than to be activist in Norway, or being artist in different. So of course, there is a difference. But then to the mil to to make the problem similar is problematic. But also to not problematize different issues, different places is also problematic because that means that nothing goes, uh, nothing continues. It's almost the same like to say that. We are we are having a so okay time here. That's why we don't need to be that active. But there is a difference also. Is that I would say like in, I don't know enough about Egypt, but let's say in Iran and other countries that I discussed with, the power also makes art a certain contra power. You know, by by hitting on it, by controlling it, it also makes it to a power. So if while in here. Just by giving it, you can do what you want, or it makes it almost unpowerless, you know, like a bit powerless. So then you have to look for the function of it and the power of it. While if I'm an activist in, in Iran, in a country, so if I dance in Iran, which is not allowed to dance, I'm already on the blacklist just by dancing without discussing it if I'm good, bad, or anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Just by, by doing it, I am. I am, And that's also, uh, how to say, power's thing. So they, they need the contra power to be able to, 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 to exist. But we also have to understand that these powers are also making this kind of activism 
activism powerful by by making it on a blacklist or putting it on a mm. the other thing is also that I think what I always think there's a difference, at least when I'm talking with some, is that the audience is different also, which means the audience are looking for the alternative places. The audience is trained to read between the lines. To, to is they, they are developed critical thinking of, if they read the newspaper of the government, they, they don't believe in the things that is written there. In, in, like, while here we, are not, we have lost that training as an audience, let's say, in, in Europe or in, so you just, so I think there are positive and negative in, 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 in the both, let's say, like this. So I think when it comes, for me, when it comes to activism, of course, we have this extreme uh, neoliberal and, and fascistic way, with, like packed in Europe in a, in a beautiful language, uh, acceptable, of course, it is my right to hate anybody that I like to, that I want to hate. I don't know what's the problem with it. If you are free, why can't I? You know, like we have very this kind of small nuances, and we don't have anybody who says this is not correct and this is correct. Or so you don't have any power to def like to do this. So I think it for me it just looks a bit like a mess sometimes, at least. So you don't know where to hit. But could that be uh, just? Uh uh, a, a difference between uh, making like uh, political art or uh, whatever in a in, in the light of strong censorship and light censorship in, in Norway, would I would say that you have to be as a, as a political artist, you have to be uh, all over there. You know, you have to be stage left. You have to be uh, you have to be. You know, if you're making a song about racism in Norway, you're going to fight racism. If you say, hey, I'm against racism and write a nice rhyme about it, everybody will, you know, it, it, will, be, it will be nothing, you know. It, it's like uh, every politician says they're against uh, racism, even the racist ones, you know. So it don't mean anything. But so if you're going as an artist to say, I'm against racism, you really you, you have to go out and say I'm gonna kill all those uh, and gonna you know cut my and you are like uh, b being really really extreme about it to get the point through you know that's uh, you know you have to say uh, if you're against p uh, b police violence then you have to say you have to kill all the police you know b to to sort of get the message through but in other uh, in other places uh, it's maybe the opposite you know that you just have to have a Small hint of it, and the audience will, will, will catch that nuance and say, "Oh yeah, he says, uh, or she says, she d d made uh, this." Uh, <laughs> that's a very small nuance, which means a lot. And here's like you have to say really, really big stuff just f to make it, to make a small point. <laughs> and the moment you go to the extremity, you also lose nuances. You know, you know, and then you, st and it's that's the, and I think that's what I'm trying. I think uh, there is almost like it's uh, how how to say. So so just for me, it's personally when it comes to the art, it's just about. I think it's about understanding a goal, like what you want to achieve with it, however small or big it's going to be, uh, and also to 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 think. How to say? I think activism and different. Everybody have a diff, every uh, country has a different strategies, and I think it's about for me it's about learning the strategies and using it in the art making. How do I make the performances? How do I relate to the public? What do I? Because in one way, you I, for me at least in the performing art, you're making a, a world. How yeah? How you how you? meet the public that comes in. So you can actually already there start to creating certain rules or certain ideas. For example, if you say, um, let's say within dance that you have a lot, this kind of thing that always male lifting a woman, you just say, you just, and we're not gonna do this. Let's just not do this. And then some people say, but then you limit your, ar your artistic blah, blah, blah. No, but you, you can change it or at the end you're not gonna die if you say, I'm not going to do this in, in my shows at all, or I'm not going to be sexist, I'm not going to show female 
body parts or la, 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 to, to sexualize the body in, in a sense. So there are things that I think, and, but then of course somebody can say, but now you put limitation on your art. And I, I'm, I say, I, yeah, but it's my freedom, it's my choice also to do that because I want to achieve something. It's not, I'm not saying everybody else has to do it. It's also like, a, I think just my, it's just that I think it, we have a lot to learn from each other to, to be able to create that uh, artistic rooms as radical as they can be. Uh, and I think I have more, uh, like at least I have learned more when I'm, when I'm confronted by somebody else's reality to understand what is my reality and how do they relate with that reality? What could that be? Like an example is I saw this documentary about, um, about uh, uh, advertisement and they have interviewed this uh, Iranian advertisement company. And then uh, you have this person, he's so cocky and so arrogant, almost that it seems like there is somebody from New York in Fifth Avenue, but he's in Iran and just like goes and he goes like, creativity, you want to talk about creativity? We are the creativest person ever. And then he talks about that they're gonna do an advertisement about a shampoo for female. But they're not allowed to show a female hair. They're not allowed to show a female in shower. They're not allowed to show a female body. And then he goes, now you tell me how you're gonna make that advertisement. Silhouette. Yeah, but no, this is not allowed either. Really? No, 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 you, because it still looks. So if they go, if they really want to censor it, they still can censor it. They're very like a strict censorships. There is this video of a uh, dancer from Belgium was in, in Iran, and then before the show, because then the censorship comes and they look at the show before it goes on, and they go this and this and this and this. No, it's not out. And there's a very funny video of this guy that from a censorship comes and says to them, uh, no, 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 no this, no this, only this. So they're not allowed to use any circular movement. Wow. You know, no <laughs> circular movement, nothing. Everything has to be strict. It's, it's really like everything must be straight. So then he, and then they, uh, the guy starts to pretend that he doesn't understand. So then the censorship guy starts to showing him all the time. No, this, no, understand, no. But only so it becomes very funny video. But, but straight can be like erection. Sorry? Straight can be like erection. I mean, anything. I mean, it's still a sexual context. <laughs> if you want to see it as a sexual context, you will see it as a sexual context. I mean, context. if you want to see anything, you can see. I mean, you're free to. <laughs> In a way, that's what we know. Nobody can <laughs> stop the mind. But, but sometimes I hear, because all of you seem very unafraid of being political. Uh, but a lot of artists that I talk to, they say, say that but art shouldn't be political. I mean, do, do you kind of destroy the art by making it political? Is, is it, should it be something, you know, out there, apolitical, while, you know, your politics is personal? I don't think uh, art should be political, like, in a form of, like, giving messages. I don't, I don't see it, it I don't think it, sh it should be direct. Like this, this president is bad. <laughs> this is not art, but uh, it it can be uh, within uh, 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 the whole performance that you get it from between the lines, and this uh, goes in your conscious and live inside your conscious, but not a direct message that you can forget later. I don't believe that, and if I see I see it would be ridiculous if I just said um, something wrong. So I I really go through. Uh, doing what exactly I shouldn't do, like what they call taboo. Mm. So I just do it. And um, to be like a model of something that people are afraid to do is more powerful than saying that you can do that, that you should that, do that. Like do it yourself and it will, uh, it will break through. So I don't really believe in direct messages in that way. So I don't call it political. I can't call it even humanitarian. I can call it just art can label it under any, under any expression, but not really uh, saying one, two, three. And for you, I was thinking maybe mm. you, you could say a uh, race that um, the, who, uh, the people, the, the parties who are against racism mm. are, are themselves racists. Yeah. That can be your message even, like you can, because you don't have to go very big. You can say that people against racism are racists. 
Yeah. But like I, I... Like, it's like a uh, twist, like that, so you can put it in a sandwich. Because, yeah, yeah racist people claim that they are against racism. So this kind of uh, uh, complex ideas that you can you can really um, uh, and put it put in a box and people will get it from between the lines, not just say it through. I'm all in favor of just saying it through. You? Yes. Honestly. Like no, I, I just uh, I mean I I mean I think that I mean uh, I'm. Art is a different word and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, of course. And and but let's not try to define stuff here. Yeah. But 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 I mean I think that m most of my best songs, my m my most well the most like uh, the the best music I made that had had has the most impact on real life has been direct. You know, it's been like stop this war just on a funky beat and a great rhyme and funny lines in between, yeah. and and uh, because sometimes that that the reality is that simple. You know, you got to stop this war. You know, you can't just bomb people, and 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 of course you can always put a lot of nuance into it, and you can remove stuff, and you can be. But I mean, I I think it I think it shouldn't be a a dogma for art not to be direct because yeah, I think that yeah I'm not stigmatizing no. it. We no. are no. from different worlds, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, a female cannot even perform or dance, so just seeing a woman dancing yeah. is a political act without yeah. saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. But you are you are talking from a more um, yeah, a sophisticated I mean level of opposition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I mean then that that's direct, you know, a female dancing in a world yeah, where females I mean, can't dance. Say it that's uh, verbally direct. Mm. But I think it isn't it about. I mean, it all depends how you call it. Let's say if you're in Europe, and you have a public support, which means you're using public money for making art, you're all already political. So if you want or not, it all depends if you label yourself or not, or if you. But you cannot say you are occupying a public arena. You're taking a public time. This is a social place. It's not. You cannot exclude people. Actually, everybody is welcome. So it, it is an. It's in a. It's an official space. So to say that you're not political, it's a bit problematic. I would say, but okay. Um, just to make it very clear, it's very. Then I think you're a bit. You're playing naive, or you're naive. You think that uh, I, I, the government, I can take the government money, but, and I can take a public space. Uh, and you know, public owned space and public time and everything, but no, no, no. I am not part of the society. I'm doing something called art, and it's totally by itself, and it's protected by its own law, and stuff like this. No, uh, not not even, especially not more and more now that where where the liberals has managed to even you uh, make our taxes to private privatize the taxes. So they say. Your tax money, my tax money, mm -hmm. which was not something we used for many years ago. We never said it was our money. It was we paid taxes. We didn't discuss like this. So it's lots of things changed. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is just to say about directness. Then again, I think for me, I come back to where are you making what, what is your audience, and what is the, what is the society you're part of, and how you choose to. You could say. If Gata's parliament went to Egypt mm -hmm. by the total freedom that they had here, and they could say their directness in that room, that would be super interesting to see when, this mm -hmm. when, when these things are moving, let's say like that. Uh, the same thing, you know, when, when I was artistic director in Katplans and I brought M M Bushra, which is a Moroccan choreographer, female choreographer, which works with. So her idea, and then to bring it to Norway to work with. Femininity, the way she worked with in Marrakesh, that's different to approach, for example, for us here than she had there. Our, you know, she had this seventy-year-old dancer with her, where she was going around and, you know, almost like uh, grabbing and uh, talking about sexuality and grabbing thing and fucking thing with with the with the chador, you know. Mm. 
why she was this sexually active in a way when she was dancing and moving in the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So of course the confrontation of, you know, for some people in Norway to have this, what is a 70 year old Maroc Moroccan woman which doesn't speak French or English, just barbar, you know, what, and she brings this sexuality on, you just go like, okay, what am I then, you know, as a Norwegian free female? When she's like this, you know, you know what I mean? And she was making circular movements, I guess. She was doing a lots of <laughs> circular movements. They were just circling all the time. So, so I'm just saying, there, there are many, so, so... But I also just, this last thing, it, for me, it's just sometimes it's about destruction. I like destruction sometimes, and that could be because I, I grew up in Iran when it was a war, in a good or bad way. And, and I think sometimes directness, when you say like, you know, like, stop the war, or doing, for me, when I was man, I'm making something and I don't find the way that I want to say it, let's say artistic or by the language, then I just cut through it by the saying, this is it. And I like the way it destruct everything. I like the way it breaks down. It just, the directness just takes away the composition idea, the idea of composition, the idea of the room as I, the atmosphere, whatever, it, it almost breaks down the, the, by simplicity and directness, almost breaks down all walls a bit. And I like that when you suddenly see that, yeah, my, my, I am limited as an artist and I, I don't find the language for this, or the art itself is limited so it cannot say it. So, so as, as a destruction, this directness I like, but I must also say, it could be that at this point we are old hip hoppers <laughs> and hip hop it's about directness it, it's a, it is not only it's uh, how to say because the moment you're direct in hip hop you have an energy and that energy is much it's important so it's not actually about saying stop the war by saying stop the war it, this is just the, it's, it's the energy that it produces that actually g gets to the activism it's not the language so it could also be that, you know, the directness is something else, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm re, um, re comprehending my ideas about this because I always thought uh, during the revolution, when we say stop the torture, that this is very ridiculous because uh, when you ask uh, whoever, the police, to not torture the citizens, they will not listen to you. Yeah. They are already criminals. They are like, oh, sorry, I didn't know that you don't like torture. I didn't know that you <laughs> mind <laughs> being tortured. Yeah. So I, felt, I always felt that we shouldn't ask uh, dictatorships or uh, oppressors to stop oppression or to stop violence. It doesn't make any sense. But now when you said it, it felt like an order, not asking yeah. them to stop. It's like ordering them to stop. But still it will not work. It won't work. Maybe it's the same about the uh, Norwegian politicians that even the racists won't say they're against racist yeah. racism, you know? Yeah. And even the torturing police say they're against for torture. Or yeah. they say they don't no, do they it. They killed, <laughs> they did that. They killed uh, the protesters and next year in the memorial they build uh, a statue for their memory mm. with their names. And they killed them. Next year they, mm. they build a memorial for them. Yeah. So this is how you write history, yeah. as if someone else killed yeah, them. Yeah. So we are against this. But they are still killing yeah. and torturing, like yeah. now, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. while they are building the memorial. <laughs> so, so saying stop killing, stop torture, no for torture, no for military uh, uh, trials, no, 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 no. They will not never listen. They will never listen to you anyway. No, so but I don't, don't, I don't you feel speak to the people. The, the crowds that, yeah, that can the really make the, the, the demand. The pronouns, the, the pronouns used in the language is talking to the regime. Yeah, yeah, yeah but really, really, you're talking to the people. Aren't I you? think it's to do, but yeah. don't you think, I, I understand in a way both, yeah, you can order them to stop, mm -hmm. then you talk to them as an equal, if you can be, which you can probably not, but mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, like, uh, and as you say, it's true, sometimes it's also about, sometimes you say something that everybody knows in the same room, and people say, ah, you're, you're preaching to the believers, you know? Yeah. But sometimes it's important to gather the believers and engage the believers and start thinking, I mean, 
to be able to start a movement sometimes, you need to gather, you need to engage and you need so we can organize. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget about this also. Part of the, sometimes it's about creating, uh, creating activism and creating this mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I think, two different things. But of course, when you t again, when you talk about this kind of, for me, for, for me you know, sitting, watching e Egyptian, you know, Tahir, and that time, or Arab Spring, coming from Iranian 1979 revolution, mm -hmm. then 2009, the Green Movement in Iran, looking the whole Arab sp uh, Spring coming up. Of course, um, let's say my, the history told me something else. Yeah. It's, happening yeah, it, it, it's happening again, and in a way you mm -hmm. know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, Muslim Brotherhood will come, yeah. because during Mubarak, there was no, there was no politic political parties which yeah. could exist. So the only place which could be political yeah. is mosques. And yeah, there are mosques which could be political and they're the organized one. They're the one who can organize. No other political party yeah. can organize except mosques. Yeah. The same happened you know, in Shah time. You exclude all, the, all political parties. Da -da -da -da. So, yeah. so you know, I'm just saying. So they also so build schools and hospitals. Exactly, exactly. They do. They so there are many. So I'm just. It, it's just that this thing. So. So then, when Mubarak left, mm -hmm. there were you know people are shouting happily that he left, and I'm sitting at least some people sitting and singing like, <laughs> we forget that he chose to leave. He has made some deals, yeah. because he has always had a choice to kill five million without any problem, yeah. without any justification, without anything. So what has happened that he chooses to leave? Yeah. And I think this is something we forget, of course, that power is, like you say, power is power. So when they mm. choose to do something, yeah. uh, so it's a bit weird. So Even Morsi, the people didn't Morsi, Of Morsi. course, of course. Yeah. But I, I just want to, to take us back to something that you said that I found interesting and that I ha haven't really thought about, the fact of building your own world. And of course you do that because you work, uh, you know, with the room, kind of. Uh, but I was wondering, is, is that, you know, circling back to like our first question, is that why art is kind of so dangerous? Because with your art you create the perfect world. You create the world, you know, that could be, and you let other people see what could be, and and you kind of, yeah, you create something new. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even though you, with, I mean, with dance and choreography, you, you can't be as direct as uh, Asla can with, you know, uh, <laughs> kill the police <laughs> or, <laughs> or whatever. But I can put the Asla like songs. But on. you know, you <laughs> you create, uh, yeah, you create the world, and you can use yeah. Asla like songs. You yeah. could also like. Literally, uh, I mean, in in a, in a choreo choreography, you yeah. could, be, of course, kill yeah. the police. But <laughs> you know, recommend it. But it's very. <coughs> this, is, this is what's called inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing a new yeah. project yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by I the way, you can yeah. do that. By the way, <laughs> I I think I just think it's it's. Let's say, if I want to be hopeful, of course you create. I'm not saying perfect world because then, then I think it's a bit too ambitious to <laughs> <laughs> to call anybody perfect. But okay, but but uh, I think and it's best it tries to it creates a certain societies, let's say that can uh, create movements. You know exactly. Yeah. You know, like you are in the room or. You know, you know, like ways of seeing the performance, which was in Norway, which was made as such a big noise. You know, they made it in a theater, and maybe they had only I don't know how many public they had, maybe say two thousand or something. I don't know, but or more. But the the, the vibration of it is totally different. So I, I think we for, for me it's always about that. Yeah, you have these people here, but if you only touch like ten of them, let's say. They go and they sit in a dinner and they talk with somebody else and then it just mm -hmm. it continues and that's a movement which is very difficult to control, I think for me at least I'm thinking like it's very difficult to control these these spaces, mm -hmm. these very private spaces which the the stories has been told again and again, 
And if we go back to stories, and I know this story of like, you know, Turkmens, they have these very different ways of uh, waving carpets. And the Turkmens are basically, so if, the, if, a, if a family took over an area, then they banned, they had only their way of waving the carpet, like the, the <laughs> how it's waved and how the format inside of it. So the ones were like, the one to keep on their thing, they did it at night and they made some under the pillow or something like this. So today I can go to a shop and I can buy the under the pillow of somebody which made it. And I have that story, you know, that this was waved, mm -hmm. uh, you know, woven, sorry, by that uh, somebody which basically tries to continue a certain tradition, mm -hmm. a certain way of thinking by the patterns. Mm -hmm. Create a real, so in a way, and so if you think about it, that stayed, they didn't manage to shut that person off. <laughs> it continued and now many, many, you know, hundreds of years later, I'm sitting on it, it hangs on my wall. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not such a big, you know, it doesn't do such thing, but actually it moves, it survives. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, and I think for me personally, this is a movement, you know, so it's not about I was personally, I go become, we talked about age earlier. Mm. I think some part of age is, is this kind of thing that at certain point I can become, it's like you understand what you can do and then you understand that hopefully if you've done something, there is like three, four generation after you, which comes, you know, the one who's listened to your song or to, you know, like the, it's just this. And that's something I think power understand. Power understand that if it's a good power, this also we have to understand. I'd rather have a very good power against me than bad power because that makes me good also, I would say. <laughs> I have to resist good in a sense. So I, I, was, I think they understand this, that maybe I have to shut this down now because if I don't do it now, I have no control over how it grows. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that, those kind of you know, small tokens of, of uh, fighting against oppression, like those uh, weaves uh, underneath the pillows. Uh, sometimes it's art and sometimes it's not. You know, exactly. like in the, during the Second World War, we had these, uh, what do you call them, binders? Yes. B b that you put in, the, in your collar. Yeah. And, and that was a s symbol against the Nazism, you know? And, a and symbol to get arrested. No, no, they, they couldn't arrest people just for having those, you know, at least yeah. not in the start. And they could use the uh, red uh, Nisselu, uh, you know, hats yeah. uh, uh, on there. Uh, you know, you could do stuff that uh, didn't have anything to do with art no. or, or, exactly. or, or, or anything, but it was just uh, small, small, discreet tokens of, of fighting the oppression. Yeah. And, it, you know, sometimes it's art and sometimes it's not. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter or, you know, mm -hmm. it, but it's... Um, I just thought about it, that yeah. the, the, you were talking about it as art, but like sort of it is not, or, or it could be. It's like creating a scene. Yeah. I can see it as art. Yeah, it's not, just maybe scene. not that important if it, like is, if it is art or not. Like a color just, yeah. or a symbol um, yeah. or um, a pin. Yeah, yeah. That's, I guess, art. Or you could say there are different ways of activism, sometimes, sometimes art learn from activism and sometimes yeah. activism learn from art. Yeah. And then in the art needs to be a part of, or don't need to, yeah. because art can be anything. And, and you know, I, I'm not telling people how art is supposed to be, but art is, can be, w when, when that thing about the pillows, you know, yeah. then the art, you know, sort of comes inside the uh, public fight. You know, it's, it's a part of a bigger fight than itself and it still participates in it mm. and it's a part of it and it's sort of very direct and very, very, you know, um, it's both uh, yeah. full of nuances and, and very direct at the same time. I see it very subtle. It uh, like sneaks in, uh, in the culture without yeah. noticing. It's subtle but mm. still powerful. Powerful but it's like it, it goes in your system like in your, you get programmed on like being free or, or yeah, yeah. like it's for me uh, as a child for example we never had uh, elections i didn't know that mm. saying no is an option no you mm. know when i grew up can we refuse the president because <laughs> he was the president for like 30 years yeah. so when i was around 25 he started when i was born uh, 
I, I just realized suddenly that we can say no. I never thought about it before. We never had elections, at least. Mm. Not even fake elections. So I didn't know it was an option. So when mm. you move this, or wave, I don't know, woven, get this woven, that rejection is a possibility, it, get, it gets in your head and stays back there. That's very mm. subtle, yeah. not direct for me. Mm. But it's mm. it lives inside your brain yeah. or your subconscious. the message is kind of clear. But I'm thinking yeah, also, it is. could this be a problematic that we, you know, that's part of when you're saying, we're saying that, it's just when you talk just now, it also confronts a bit, we say, uh, you know, art should not be, at the time, it, we don't want to impose it out of anybody. And some part of me, and I'm now a bit on the edge because now we've been talking too long and maybe I'm losing it, but okay. It's just, maybe that's one of the problems that we have. We don't dare to say what it should be and what it should not. You know what I mean? And, and what happened in that room, at least I think in Norway or in, in Europe, I would say, the moment we don't say we have an extreme right wing dressed in its most sophisticated, mm, something comes in and just goes into this small empty spaces and defines it and it says it should not be this without any problematic mm. you know we are sitting you know you can say we are sitting here in post leftish morality discussion you know like we, we discuss with ourselves because we have been so criticized that we are so we were so categorically we were so categoric we were so the left was so right and wrong, la, 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 la. So now we have embodied this uh, discussion inside. Is, am, am I okay if I say art should not be this? You know, yeah. you know what I mean? And then while we are dealing with all this kind of discussion, suddenly this right-wing bastard liberalist just comes in and just goes like, female don't have a right for shit, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. And they just go, while you're discussing, you know, uh, Abba, 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 and they just go, bah, and, and, and but I mean, I, I, yes, I, you know I, what I, I mean. I, There's I something, and, I, and I'm not saying I, I don't know how to hit it. I'm not saying I know how to hit it, huh? But it's almost like, at this personally, I just go like, what happened? I could hit this so well, and now I'm just like, are you lost in the nuances? No, no something like you know, like and. And of course, I know what happens the moment I go to the other one. You know, I know what happens if I hit it also. You know, it, it's just that. I know that it will not function as, as it did before mm. if I hit. Yeah, but m my point is, isn't that the, I mean, I can, I, I have a lot of opinions on art. You know, <laughs> on what is good art and what is bad art for me. You know, what what uh, what do I want to do and what do I uh, what I don't mm. want to do. But but also in my perspective, it's important uh, to you know let the blossoms bloom yeah. and let people okay. do their stuff. And I think I mean that is the the method of the ultra right. You know, mm. is to define what is uh, what what's right and what's wrong. You know, and they would say. And they would say, no, uh, you know, really artistic dance uh, choreographies, that's bad culture. We don't need it. We should spend money on it. Yeah. And I don't want to say that even if I don't, like, like yeah. you know, watch it a lot, you know? Uh, uh, because, because I don't understand your thing, no. you know? And, and it might be great, it's just not... I just don't understand it. Mm. And I mean, if I would say that, no, the only way for political activism in meeting uh, culture is political direct rap music, that would be kind of silly too, you know? <laughs> I know, I'm just, that's what I'm trying to say. I think it's a bit, kind of, I'm not, uh, really, I don't have any answers. It's just about, uh, I, I don't, there, there is almost like, uh, in a way, what you said also is that what about if you dare? Because I, I, I sometimes think maybe it's also about daring to, to define and fail. Yeah. 
because because I mean, this is something I I mean I had this thing since I have for me since I have this doability I, I have lots of contact with different people from different but then like you know I I never go back I never go to Iran so I can I'm free in this sense to do whatever shit I don't need to think of consequences of what I'm doing. Some others must because they have to make something and then they're going back to Iran uh, or or Egypt, anywhere you know in the country that they go. <coughs> but so I'm, I'm also thinking like, what is the responsi- What is the possibility and responsibility of that choice? You, you know what I mean. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm, I think I'm just looking mm-hmm. because there are things that are happening. I remember like oh, one of the big thing, yeah. It, it again. It really depends where you are and what. I was performing in Palestine in Ramallah, and I was. I had this performance where I'm talking about re- that reality is manipulated. Mm-hmm. That I can manipulate my dreams by dreaming, and I, I can like change the whole thing. And while I'm standing and saying the text in Ramallah, I have to stop. I cannot say this in Ramallah because this the. Uh, the Israel, the Israeli government is rewriting a history again and again. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. They have actually taken a history and they rewrite it. And I'm standing there in my total luxury of total free identity. You know, my mm-hmm. identities and my mobility and my Norwegian passport and everything like this. Thinking like, yeah, come on, let's play with this identity history and let's just move it around, slip it up, up, up. And then suddenly I'm standing. I am in Ramallah. <laughs> I cannot say this. I have to stop and I had to stop the performance.